John Force, 16 time funny car champion. And I'm sitting here in Yorba Linda, California, in my office. And right here next to me, Daniel Hood, my son in law and my crew chief. The one that took me, along with Brian Karate, on that day in Seattle, 2019, to a record that may never be changed or reset. Let's look at it on the video. as Jim Campbell and John Forrest get ready to do battle in round one here at the Northwest Nationals. Hey, for John Forrest, his biggest problem right now is the competition at one time he ruled. Jim Campbell loses traction, hazes the tires, and John Forrest goes 3.895 seconds at 327.9 miles per hour. That morning in 2019 at Seattle, I was stressed. I was trying to call you, I was trying to call Karate, I wanted to know what the tune-up was. I couldn't remember who we had to race. I think it was Jim Campbell for Big Jim Dunn. Uh, a lot of history there. And uh, But we had a shot that day to go four rounds and do something that no one's ever done in history. And that's set a record with 150 wins. And yet we hadn't won a race all year. We had been struggling. We found a little something down at Sonoma in the clutch can that was gonna make us better. And trying to reach Danny, I could get no response. He's always cool as a cucumber, where I'm always over center. That's the way I've always been. But it got me there, but he gets there his way. So give me a, a little bit about what took place that morning, what you were looking at, the conditions and the track. Where were you going to go with this race car? Knowing you had a driver that needed a lot of help on that starting line. Well, we just looked back at our good qualifying run, which we qualified fourth and we ran it the same and it repeated. And then we just had to follow the curve of the, the temperature of the track all day. And okay, and I think that year in 19, we ended up fourth in the point standing. But what was amazing, we were going up against a guy like Jim Dunn. Okay, a very consistent car. A match racer like myself in the old days, he could go down any, any dirt road as we called it in those days. So we knew that later on in the day, if we got past first and second round, we were going to be hitting some tough competition. The Wilkerson's, uh, the Petragons, uh, the, uh, the, the Schumachers, that whole group, Beckman, Tommy Johnson, Hagen, Caps, they were all coming. But your focus right then was to go A to B with that fuel funny car against a guy that you knew Big Jim Dunn with Campbell would not smoke the tires. How did you approach that? We just raced our lane. We, gotta, we can't worry about who's next door. Every funny car in our class is good, so you have to make the best run you can in your own lane. Yeah, well, you might have been calm and cool from the outside, but let me tell you something. Inside that race car, I was stressed. Beyond, you don't even want to think about trying to win a race, let alone trying to set a, a piece of history, 150 wins. Uh, and there was a lot of crew chiefs b b before Daniel Hood and Brian Karate, uh, Austin Coyle. Uh, the, the list just goes on and on that had helped me, Bernie Federley, wins over the years. But this was a special day. And later in the day, when we got that win, I, I was sure to give them all credit to the teams and the drivers, and everyone that was part of John Force Racing, uh, the crew chiefs, the sponsors, everybody credit uh, for setting that day at 150. But you know what was amazing was, you know, you know you're up against a, a person like Big Jim Dunn, a, a real veteran, and yet I believed in Daniel Hood and my team and Karate that they could take me down this racetrack. I didn't need to be great on the light, I just needed to be fair. And a lot of focus was don't do anything wrong, don't roll this thing too deep, try to get lane choice for the next run, and try to cut a, a, a light that could put you into the winner's circle. So in the middle of that, uh, everything went right. Cut the light, down the racetrack, Jim Dunn, uh, Campbell, his driver, neck and neck with us right there. But right at the end, the car, my car got loose. And then it moved around and boy, it jumped on me. It went to the outside, to the inside, uh, a little smoke out of the motor, uh, but we did get the win. And boy, rounding that corner to get first round out of the way is a great feeling knowing that you got a shot. Was it a great feeling for you? First rounds are always the hardest. It seems yeah. like you can keep going rounds the easier it gets. 
is 0-4 against Robert Height the last four times they have run heads up against each other. Make change the record as John Force has gotten one back on Robert Height. 3.909 seconds at 328 miles an hour. Nearly a full tenth of a second quicker than Ron Caps went just a few moments ago. So here we are, second round. Okay, that's Seattle. Um, up against uh, um, one of our own cars, the Auto Club Chevrolet. Uh, Robert Height driving and Jimmy Proc tuning. And let me tell you something. Jimmy goes for it all the time. Robert Height, great on the lights, probably, if not the best, one of the best. And boy, I gotta do everything I can just to stay in the game with him. But uh, Danny, tell us how you guys approach that, you and Karate. Well, you know when you race Jimmy and Cunningham that they're gonna run as hard as they can. So we went up there trying to run as hard as we can. And when you're racing your own teammate, it's a win-win. So we just went up, kind of had fun. And ran as hard as we could. Luck is a big part of the game, and luck was on our side that day. Getting past uh, uh, Campbell in the first round, uh, you know, coming up against Robert Height, who was fighting for the championship, and we were in the fight too, don't get me wrong. And uh, uh, so luck kind of went our way, uh, but let's move on. Let's move on to the, uh, the, the semis. I think we ended up with Jack Beckman. Uh, there's another car. Uh, great driver on the lights, a good consistent car, but we managed, uh, you know, running low ETs, we, we, we kept putting them over in that lane. We were staying in the lane that we needed. Now it is time for Jack Beckman and John Forrest to square up. Head to head, Beckman leads all time, 32 to 17. But this season, John Forrest is better. Two, two uh, wins to one, of course, against Jack Beckman. And Jack Beckman defeated Forrest in 2007 for his only win at this event. So pretty good stuff here for two long-term competitors. The Peak Lighting Sponsorship on the side of John Forrest's Chevrolet Camaro here this weekend. The Infinite Hero colors being carried by veteran Jack Beckman. Two very hungry Nitro Funny Car Racers that have been a long span since either of them have hoisted a Wally. Jack Beckman smokes the tires and John Force is going to the final round. The 255th of his career. Consider this, it was May 2nd, 1979 when John Force made his first national event final round. Okay, we're down to the semis. We got Beckman, I've had pretty good luck that year against Beckman. I think I beat him a couple of times when I raced him. Uh, but at the end of the day, we still with lane choice, we moved him over into that bad lane. Dean Antonelli was tuning that car. We know Dean very well, you do. You know how he thinks. He wasn't going to get outrun. He was going to go for it. And that put the odds in our favor, knowing that that lane wasn't as good as the right lane that we were in, which we got because of low ET the rounds before. How did you approach it? We just went up there and tried to make a clean run like the previous round and knowing that the other lane was not as good as the right lane. So if we did our job A to B, kept it in the middle, it should turn on another one lane. And that common coolness that you always have, you know, not like me, that's why I never chose to ever even try to be a tuner, uh, hard enough in the driver's seat. Uh, but we got the job done. We got the win against Beckman again. Uh, he gave it up just past half track. And uh, I think we picked up uh, Lowy T again, uh, putting us in the good lane uh, against Ron Caps in the final. Mm -hmm. Yep. In the world of NHRA drag racing, this is Hercules. This is Paul Bunyan. This is John Q. Public and John Wayne rolled up into one 11,000 horsepower package. His name, John Force, defines in many ways Nitro Funny Car Drag Racing. It has defined an attitude, it has defined an approach, it has defined a life that began in an impoverished state and has turned into something that even he could not have imagined as a high school football quarterback on a team that didn't win a single game. First win comes in Montreal 1987.
get this, Lewis Bloom pulled this one up. A perfect 700 race span between, if we count that first win in 1987, and we count this race, 700 races encompassing the 149 victories that he has accomplished in his NHRA funny car racing career. They stacked up like cordwood from there. And on the other side of the racetrack, the second winningest Nitro funny car driver in the history of the NHRA with great history here. His first win in a top fuel car, 1995, to his 50th win in 2016, and his 60th career win in 2018. His 61st career win would be the equivalent of a block in chess. He would stop. That man right there, Jill Prock, Brittany Forrest, looking on as John Forrest and Ron Capps, two of the indisputably greatest ever, get ready to lock horns here in Seattle. Will this be the moment that John Forrest closes the chapter on 150 wins? They leave within two thousandths of a second. Forces a car length out. And at the finish line, it's John Forrest for the 150th time in the greatest career in NHRA history. He's done it. Pacific Raceways going absolutely bananas when he went across the finish line. A 397 with the tail hanging sideways late in the run at 320 miles an hour defeats Ron Capp's lower 401. It starts with the tuner, the car. They gave him a car that can win. John Force did the rest. We have Bruno Massa with Brian Karate. Down here on the side of what Dan Hood and Brian Karate. Dan, this is your father-in-law. You just tuned to his 150th victory history. How, how does that feel right now? Just a blessing to be a part of it. Finally got that 150 monkey off our back. It's been hanging there and glad for him. I think we're going to have quite a few more to come. His ninth career victory at, at Seattle. The only other track he's had more success is Brainerd, Minnesota with 11 wins. It is never easy to predict John Force's emotional state when he climbs out of a race car. Is it relief? Is it satisfaction? Or is it tears? We're going to find out when he pulls his helmet off here in a moment. But for everyone that sat here to watch this drag race this weekend, all of you watching at home, you've seen something that we may never, ever see again in the sport of NHRA drag racing, a 150th career victory. Don't let anybody tell you don't I mean, matter. I'm so up lately. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come here. The best right here. It's just the raw the motion of John Forrest don't pouring you, out. Don't screw you up. I've been screwed up for 25 races. And God, I'm glad that monkey's gone. Where is that monkey? I love that monkey now. But the words hey, flowing like a river, and we apologize if some of those uh, hit you the wrong direction. But that's John Forrest. And Jamie Howe is right there at ground zero with him. Good luck with this, Jamie. And Ron Capps is the one that put the winner hat on his head. 150 wins right for John lips. Force, right on the I lips for it. Ron Capps. John, how do you explain the success that you've been able to enjoy? Because I surround myself with the greatest people, uh, the greatest sponsors with Peak and Auto Club and Chevrolet and, and Advanced Auto Parts and CarQuest and, and, and of course Montana Brand. i got a young kid coming here right now. But what I've done is sur taken their money and bought the best people. Karate, Brian Karate, my son-in-law Daniel Hood, and Fabrizi and this team got me this win. And I've been struggling, but there's a lot of other guys that have got me this win. So I just want to say, I want to say to all the guys that were part of 150, you're all part of my life, but I want to tell you, Austin Coyle, I love you. You stood by me, called me every week, said I was screwed up, but I could still drive. God bless you, you and Bernie Fedeli. We finally made it. It's 150, and I'm over this. John, John as, you, as, you hold that, as you hold up that Wally, there is a special Wally here. That was your first one, 1987 Montreal. Holding both his first and 150th Wally's, how do you do it? This is the way you write it up. John Force and his team, they had some work to do. They were at a disadvantage coming into this final round. It was Ron Cap that was quicker in the semifinals. John Force had the car, the team gave it to him. He left the starting line right there with Ron Capps. Ron Capps, for some reason, slowed down. But I realized when these two drivers were pulling up into the staging lanes, a very special place for both of them. But John Force, 150 wins. I was there for 100. And I think what's most telling about that win is he thanked Austin Coyle, Bernie Federley, the people that got him there. Hey, I'm going to the stands, baby. 
his family now. He gives his wife, Lori, a kiss on the cheek, his grandson standing with him. And now you heard of what he said. He's heading to the stands. You know, I got so excited watching that final with y'all. Uh, Danny told me we actually didn't have lane choice in the final. I'm amazed that Caps took uh, what we thought was a bad lane. Uh, you got to understand something. This was a year ago, but a lot's gone on in between there. Uh, especially for me, Danny probably remembers it all, but but I don't. But I knew, I do know there was a monkey on our back, and we couldn't get rid of it that year. And we went on uh, uh, to win the 150, and and uh, even. <laughs> and got rid of this guy, the monkey. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, Daniel Hood, his partner, Brian Karate, they did a great job. And uh, I, if I haven't already, I'd like to thank you personally for that day of, of uh, and Brian Karate for that 150th win. Uh, my, uh, my family was there. My wife, Lori, was there that had watched me from the very beginning to when I got my first at Montreal. Uh, first win and my grandson uh, uh, Jacob I've watched him with you racing him at different tracks around the country and, and he's only eight years old watching him in, in, in junior dragsters and watching his reaction when he wins and maybe one day he'll go for 150 and you'll be tuning <laughs> I'll be in heaven uh, but it was quite a day but how did that moment how did it feel to you it was good to get rid of that monkey. We've been to some finals. We had a really good car all year. You know, we had that problem in the bell housing. And we, I think we knew f when we got that win, it would come a lot easier for the next one. It only took a couple races later, we went and won the U.S. Nationals. Win an Indy, that was spectacular, because that's the granddaddy. That's the one that every crew chief, every driver, every team wants to win. But that day to get that 150, that was quite an honor for me, uh, something I'll never forget. And in all of that emotion, yeah, they had to believe me a lot, and I apologize to everybody, but they were giving me trophies, pictures, everybody was, was wanting to be part of that moment. I think I got three trophies that day, but at the end of it, I wanted to get back because an up-and-coming up driver, Austin Brock, driving the Montana brand, was going for his first win ever, and I knew what that moment was like. Uh, because I remembered mine in Montreal. Got back, and uh, you were there, you saw it, everybody was part of it. Big day, right? Oh boy. Yeah, I remember telling Austin, we're gonna get 150 and one today, and he looked at me and said, let's do it, and we did it, it was awesome. I got back to the start line. Proc had just left the start line. Uh, I, I think he was uh, racing Steve Torrance, a, a kid that was going for the championship, uh, and in that moment, they got the win. It was just, it was unbelievable. But something that I'd done years back, I was in a real bad crash. And I returned it to Beka. I couldn't hardly walk. And I remember trying to climb the fence at Topeka because I'd won the race and I wanted to be with the fans. They're the ones that got me here. The sponsors, all of that is true. The teams, all of that is true. But it's the fans that motivate you, that drive you. And I couldn't get over the fence. They tried to drag me over. And I swore if I ever have that moment again, and there I had it that day with 150 at Seattle. And I remember running across the racetrack, everybody was looking down at Proc and everything that was going on, but I was running to those grandstands. And yep, I got over the fence, it wasn't pretty. End over end on my side, got up, <clears throat> grabbed my fat belly and ran, you know, for the stands, got up in the stands. The fan, I got kissed by more guy. Caps think he had it bad, getting kissed by me. I got, none of the girls wanted to kiss this old guy, but all the guys did. But it was pretty exciting up there in the stands to be treated that way and have that moment before I went to the press room. That moment of winning 150 wins. And you know, later, we went on to Indy and it was 151. So uh, we haven't stopped yet. One day, Petty, Richard Petty, we're coming after you in NASCAR. We're going after 200. If you can do it, so can we. I guess if I live that long. What do you think, Danny? We'll find out next year. Yeah. Now through no
November 30th. Save $7 on peak 10X antifreeze at participating retailers. And don't forget to enter for a chance to win the Blue Death Platinum Chevrolet Silverado at Silverado Blue Death Sweepstakes.com.